so I was gonna. In one quarter mile, store. keep right, oh, then go. turn left. And uh, I had gone into a little Dollar General, and the, the girl there, she's pretty nice. I've seen her a couple times. Uh, I'd asked her how she was doing. You know, my dad used to always tell me, when people ask you how you're doing, don't tell them all that bad stuff. Just go, oh, yeah, I'm doing fine. And that's hard to lie to people to their face, but I can see where the simplicity of it all. Keep right, then it's turn better, left. better, or maybe it's a positive effect to try to claim you're doing okay. So, anyway, she had said, well, if I didn't have these nasty customers I had today, and they were pretty bad. It was really sad. Um, so she, uh, um, I said, oh, I can tell you how to handle that. So way back in, what, in Helena, Arkansas, I managed at Piggly Wiggly. I was one of many managers. Turn right, then turn left. Like they redid that house. Yeah. And that's a safe house there. That's why. Mm-hmm. Well, there's no lights on it, but it's odd. Yeah, I know. They may be out of town. They might be. They go and visit their relatives or whatever. Um, anyway, so... Uh, I was one of many managers in that store. And... It, uh... Turn very right. poor area, predominantly poor area, at the Mississippi River, like this house with all the junk in the front. That was recently built that house. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it was a predominantly poor area. And uh, a lot of fade stamps, uh, predominantly black area, uh, Mississippi River. Check stand, and now whenever we get busy, I'm 
one of those where I didn't just sit at my office looking pretty and doing nothing. I would get down there and grab a pen and go down on that floor and jump on a register so we can get the people out because my philosophy is, you know, take that money over that belt because that's our paycheck. That's what keeps us open. Just not right. lose that money, you know. Um, let's not make the people wait. I'm doing absolutely nothing setting up in that office, you know, because I have my work done. So it's no trouble for me to get out and do something, you know. It's sort of like if you have time to clean, you have time to clean. So, I was out there checking one day, you know, dressed real nice, my heels, my business suit. So, and uh, we had something called WIC, W-I-C, which is a government aided program for people. And it was for predominantly poor people, but I guess right. other people can get it too.
register. Take it to try to explain to them that these items are not approved by food stamps. No, you can't buy toilet paper on food stamps. You know, whatever it is. So, anyway, uh, the second order she has it separated and it's the wig stuff. And I look back there and it looked like some wig stuff. She goes to hand me the wig voucher. I'm looking at that food. I'm like, is that all your food there? Yes. Turn right. Just ring it up. And I said, okay, um, here's the thing. Uh, I can't, you got like Captain Crunch and Fruity Pebbles, and then you got this, uh, I don't know what it was, white bread or some damn thing. And, and then, uh, she had some other junk. She had the wrong eggs. She picked the wrong cheese. Um, I, you know, I thought she'd just slide it through, I guess. And uh, I imagine she was experienced with like a person. Um, I did not think she was brand new to it all. I mean, we had one little bad boy sometimes. In three and three quarter miles, store, turn right. Which that's kind of extinct. You rarely you go to the market and have bad boys at all. But in that small town, that was a, like a really neat thing they had. They just had bag boys, even though most places in the states didn't have them anymore. And it's, you know, we always try to give everybody a job, you know. And so, uh, she, I told her, I said, well, whatever you'd like to pick on the list, because we had a printed out list on the other side of the register that the customer could see standing there. And then we had one on our side next to the keyboard that we could see. So if we were in doubt of something not being able to run through that wick because we could lose our license for selling anything that is not wick approved. And so we had to be really, really, really careful what we were bringing up on that wick. And it was a government program and we could be, you know, revoked from that. So another store would make the money off that and we would lose it. So we sure didn't want to lose that because there was quite a bit of it anyway. It's guaranteed money, so. But anyway, so. I told her, I said, look, I can send the boy back, pick out what you need on that list. And now I have three people behind her in the line. And uh, I said, you know, you don't even have to go back there to get it. I'll be glad to send the boy back and just tell him what you'd like instead of these items. Because they're not WIC approved, I can't put them through on your WIC, but I'll be glad to charge you separate for them if you'd like, but if you want the free stuff that comes on the WIC, it has to be the stuff off that list, so just pick some, and we'll replace those, you know, three items, and whatever it was, and, and she was like, fuck no, you just ring it up, bitch, and I was like blown away, I could not believe anybody could be so disrespectful much less think that I'm just going to bring up a bunch of garbage on a government program that's for your health that you're getting for free and that you know you know damn well what they have to go through to fill that out because I was on week one time they said oh you can get that free and I'm like I'm not a worker oh no you get it free and I know what you have to go through to go down there and get that and it's a huge savings when you know they pay for your eggs your cheese your milk and all this stuff it's really neat and so, I mean, why well, abuse it? So anyway, um, especially cheese. Cheese is expensive. So anyway, she got pretty snotty with me. And I told her again, I said, I'm sorry, I can't bring it up like that. Now, if you wanted me to go ahead and use the voucher and bring up the stuff that's approved, that's fine. But once that voucher goes through, you get nothing. Nothing extra. You can't come back and get the other stuff, whatever. It's going to ring up what I ring up, and that is it. That, that's the end of that one ticket on that voucher. And so, she was like, is that a sheriff car sitting in the dirt? Jeez. So she was like, well, bitch, just, you just do your job. And then the people behind her, including the older gentleman, were giving me a bunch of crap. White bitch, just ring it up. It's none of your business. Just do your job. I mean, just really being paperheads. So, what I did was, I turned around, and look at that big old Hummer somebody got. A 
it's not from this town. Huh. No way, Jose. Yeah. So, uh, uh, they just weren't very nice, and, you know, that was back in the day when I was pretty In three quarters straight. of a mile, turn and right. I didn't tolerate any damn trash. I will be the first one to jump over the counter and whoop your raggedy ass in a heartbeat. You do not disrespect me and I will make an attitude adjustment on you in a moment's notice. No problem. So, you know, you gotta hold back. You're holding back. Yeah. So, I, I just... I looked over, you know, we were all banging away trying to get these people out because we want to make that money if we had a rush. We didn't rush very often, but wanted to take in that money just fast all of it that we could because that's our paycheck whatever rolls over that bill that's how you make it pay but I wasn't going to take it from some trash that's getting free stuff that's abusing it and trying to get me in trouble so we lose all them wick stuff for the turn store. right so anyway um she uh uh I turned the key on the register and lock it and I said, I'm sorry, I have to go to the lair. But she can go to the next register over. Um, thank you. And I turned around and she said, bitch, you can't do that. And I said, oh, yes, I can. You can't stop me. If I have to go to the restroom, you can't stop that. I'm sorry. It's just a thing Continue on route. And I turned around and walked away. Went back in a warehouse up against the wall trying to cool out. And my boss, Bill, came back there and he looks at me and I thought, well, he's going to give me the axe because I walked off the floor. And he said, what's the matter? And I said, man, this young black girl was so mean to me and the three people behind her waiting. And I didn't even have to come down there and check, you know, because I'm in the office. I don't even have to. But I did it because it's our money, you know, and I was trying to lighten the load for our other checkers. Because I'm really fast, and they're pretty fast too, but it's some pretty good checkers. But, you know, I'm trying to get that money through. That's our money. That's our pay. That keeps our store open. And, uh, he said, well, he said, so what'd you do? I said, well, I got tired of being cussed, so I turned the key and told him I had to go to the bathroom. And he laughed. And he said, well, how much longer are you going to be back here? I said, well, I thought you were firing me. He said, oh, no way. He said, you're one of my top people. I said, I'm not going to fire you. And I kind of laughed. And he says, but, um, do you know how long you'll be? Because it's pretty busy out there and I can use you. I said, are those people gone? Because <laughs> I'm not coming out there unless they're gone. And, and, and I said, because you'll be putting me in handcuffs. I go out there again. Check. He went out on the floor and he'd known the other checkers because our check staffs were so close together. The other checkers had heard the way they were treating me. Yeah, and so he'd asked them about it and they said, Oh, yeah, those people were gone. And, uh, so he came back there in the warehouse and he says, Look, he says, Red, they're gone. So if you could please come out on the floor, I sure could use you because you're the best. And I'm like, Yes, sir, I can do that. I'm sorry, I thought it was you were going to fire me. He said, No, no, no. So I went back out there. So, if people are giving you a hard time, and you're a checker, which I'm going to tell you right now, it's the worst job on the face of this earth. I don't care where you are working at. People are mean for no reason. Okay? No reason. They're vicious mean. And it's horrible. They don't understand what it's like to do that job. Because it's not all daisies and roses, trust me. Because there are some damn mean people. And I don't know why they have to be like that. All you do is checking their stuff out, taking their money, and sending them on their way. The whole idea is to get them out as fast as possible. Shut up, do your job. Do it. You know, get them out. Go to the next one. That's your money. That's your paycheck. That's the store's income. Get as much money as you can to come over that bill. You know? But it's a really terrible job. And, and that's what makes it really bad. I mean, there's some great people that do come in, but not many. Here's another one. 
sad, but that's how you solve that problem. No one can stop you if you have to pee. Period. If you have to pee, take advantage of that. Turn that key on that sucker and go. If you see a boss on the way, say, I have an emergency, I have to pee. They cannot stop you. Period. And get away from that negativity, because that negativity will ruin your whole day. It just gets worse. Sometimes, they just don't like you and will never like you, or they're just mean, and they're going to be mean to anybody, and it's just like, this is not my day for you to be mean to me, it's not happening, because I'm a really nice person, I love everybody, but don't be mean to me, you know, I don't even know you, why would you be so mean, so um, don't let it ruin your day, you don't take that negativity, stay with that positive, be happy, think positive, don't let people ruin your day. Yes, I agree. Take that money, take that money, take that money. But, man, if you can't handle it, cause her, try to call somebody over. Don't make a big scene and don't say any negative crap to piss them off some more. Because people like to excuse me for a moment. Go over to your nearest co-worker manager and say, Can you please take care of this person? I'm having a problem with them. Or they just don't like me. I don't know. Can you go ahead and check them out and get them through? And then head out. Don't stand there. Don't make faces. Just go to the bathroom or get away from them until they get them checked out. Get away. And, and then, you know, it'll it'll hopefully go smoothly and they'll get out. And go on their way and take their products and they're making, still making everybody's paycheck. But just, that's the best way to do it. Don't deal with that negativity. Sometimes you just can't help it, you know. Somebody might have lost a family relative and in a bad mood. Or they just lost a ton of money or had something stolen. Throwing it all in you, and you're nobody, but just a dumb checker. That's what he's called. Say, I'm sorry, I'm just a dumb checker. When people get mad, oh, I'm sorry, I'm a dumb checker. But um, that's the best way to do it, really. Turn that key, I have to go to the bathroom. See ya. Voila. Because, you know, you want to be mean, I'll make you wait some more because you have to go in the other one and find all the other people. You know, I can't do it. Now, if you're in a situation where, you know, you have to hold your breath, then you can hold it long enough, putting up with their crap, without saying anything back, because you just aggravate the situation if you get snippy with it. Sometimes you can't solve it, it's just freaking mean. You know, they can be drunk or on drugs, and they're just in that negative mode. Uh, sometimes you can't fix it, sometimes you have to just hold your breath. Sometimes those are the best customers in the world, the mean ones. They will spend some serious money with you, especially if you own the business. You will be very surprised if you hold your breath. And don't mouth off to them and just try to get their money and get done with the transaction because the next time you see them, they're going to appreciate you more and more. I've had a few customers like that who spend hundreds with me. And, and um, I just held my breath. And they got nicer and nicer every time I saw them, actually. Uh, and one girl, every time I saw her, she spent huge money with me, four and five hundred dollars at a time. And I'm like, you know, if I'd have been mean to her, I'd have lost her from the get-go. And this girl's a regular customer. Every time I saw her, she spent good money with me. So, what you really want to do is, is, you know, decide how important the situation is. If it's somebody you got to deal with longer than, you know, just three or four minutes, checking them out, and you have to do a business deal with them, then yes, I would say, try to delete them and refuse service to them, because they get worse. And before it's all over with, whatever the business you're doing with them, uh, it's going to get horrible. And the best thing to do is get rid of them. But if you're just in a thing where you're checking people out, it's a boom-boom thing. It's like, they buy their stuff, pay you, and they're on the way out the door. Then you try to handle it keep your mouth closed and just kind of say yes, whatever you'd like. No problem. And you try to keep in that positive mode. That you, McDonald's has a thing where they say, always shake your head yes. That way the customer thinks you're catering to them, even though you absolutely disagree and they're asshole. They want you to shake your head yes. It's something they teach in the McDonald's companies. Uh, but really, all in all, I don't mind their battle. Turn that key. Tell me 
got to go to the bathroom. They can't stop you. Anyway, I hope that helps you. And you have a great day. Love to you.